Hi there, hello everyone, and uh, welcome back to this episode. Uh, I mean, I'm so excited to do this. Like, this is the first video episode of Faith as it is, and in this episode, we'll be talking about why do Catholics and Christians uh, end their prayers with "Through Christ our Lord" and not with anything else? Like, why do they use that "Through Christ our Lord, Your Son, and the Unity of the Holy Spirit"? So, why why do they do that? Well. Most of you would answer that it is because Christ alone is the mediator, as Saint Paul said, and hence he died for us. And I guess that should be the reason. Well, of course, it is the reason. I mean, like Christ's death and resurrection uh, for mankind—that's what is the most important reason. But uh, in order to make it more clear uh, to that uh, question, I would like to uh, enlighten you, probably. So please do watch this video. Or if you're listening to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please do drop a like and a review from Apple Podcasts, if possible, would be great. And if you're watching on YouTube, please do drop the subscribe button. So continue watching. Well, now let us begin the episode with a short prayer. Merciful Lord, we thank you for this amazing day. We thank you for everything that you have been doing to us all these days. Lord, our life is short, and in this short span of time, we request you to grant us the patience, the courage, and the desire to know you and love you, so that we could reach you in the afterlife. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Well, friends, uh, thank you for joining, and we'll just dive straight into the episode. Have you ever noticed that the prayers of all the Christians, and in particular Catholics, end with "Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, Our Lord," and not abruptly? Like we don't just say "Amen," or we don't say that we make this prayer through the Holy Spirit. We don't say that we make this prayer through Mama Mary. We make this prayer through Saint Joseph. No. That is a whole different section. That is intercession. So we'll deal with that in other episodes if the need arises. But most of us would have uh, come across this phrase through Jesus Christ, your Son, a Lord. And why? Why do we do this? And it's not just uh, a phrase that you know that just comes with the prayer. But do we know that reason? And why do we do that? Well, to know why, please keep watching. It is. Through the mystery of the incarnation, Jesus Christ became man, the mediator of God and man. Notice the term here, mediator. And most of you, as I said in the start, would definitely say, "Here, this is what we said, mediator of God and man." But here is what you forget. I mean, if you know this, fine. But if not, let me tell that he is a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. By shedding his own blood, he entered once and for all into the holy places. He did not enter a place made by human hands or a mere type or a prototype of a true one, but he entered heaven itself, where he is seated at God's right hand, mediating for us. Yeah, you heard that right. He is mediating for us. Well, the reason I've already, if you had paid attention. I just said that now. If not, let me explain it even further. And the Church, the Catholic Church, continues to reflect this mystery in all her prayers. This mystery of Jesus Christ, the High Priest, is reflected in the Apostles' statement in Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. I'll read that out for you. Through him, then, let us always offer the sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of lips that profess believe in His name. Well, we were once the enemies of the Father, not the little war enemies, but enemies through sin. Yeah, sin builds up enmity between God and our sinful state. So, but we have been reconciled through the death of Christ. And it is through Him then we offer our sacrifice of praise, our prayer to God. He became our offering to the Father, and through Him, our offering is now acceptable. And it is for this reason 
that Peter the Apostle urges us to be built up as living stones into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 This is the reason why we offer prayer to God our Father, but always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Still, this might seem obscure. Like, I don't get the point what you're telling Phillips. So what do you exactly mean? What do you exactly intend to convey? Well, bluntly stating, it's just that uh, we offer our prayers through Christ our Lord, not because he is the mediator alone, but he is the high priest himself as well. So, speaking of this high priesthood, what exactly is this? When we speak of Christ's priesthood, what else do we mean than the incarnation? So this mystery, the Son of God, through incarnation, the Son of God, though his state was divine, he emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave. As a slave, he humbled himself and in obedience he even accepted death. Well, why do we say that he, was, he took the form of a slave? Because humanity became enslaved to sin. It became enslaved to death upon the sin of our first parents. So that is the reason uh, you know, we refer to humanity as slavery. Even though he then possessed equality with the Father, he became a little less than angels, always equal to the Father. The Son became a little less because he became a man. By this condition, Christ, the only begotten Son of God, though himself ever remaining God, became a priest. To him, along with the Father, we offer our sacrifice. Yet through him, the sacrifice we now offer is holy, living, and pleasing to God. Indeed, if Christ had not sacrificed himself for us, we could not offer any sacrifice. For it is in him that our human nature becomes a redemptive offering. When we offer our prayers through him, our priest, we confess that Christ truly possesses the flesh of a race. Like, this is so beautiful. Like, if you can, I'll just uh, repeat that, but pay attention to it. When all the times we offer our prayers through him, our priest, that is Christ, we confess that Christ truly possesses the flesh of our race. Christ is also human. Hebrews 5.1, we find that every high priest is taken from among men. He is appointed to act on behalf of these same men in their relationship to God. He is to offer gifts and sacrifices to God. So let me paraphrase this for a kid, for a fifth grade kid. So high priests are basically priests who are taken from among humans. And when we say that Jesus Christ is a high priest, we are also saying that Jesus Christ is also a human. We do not, however, say that through Christ the Lord, Amen, and simply conclude. Uh, if you have ever noticed the prayers during the Mass, in the churches or chapels or wherever you are, the opening prayer, uh, the prayer after communion, a lot, a lot of prayers, it always ends with, we make this prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And what do we mean by this? Well, by saying this, we commemorate the natural unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is clear that the Christ who exercises a priestly role on our behalf, whom we say that is a human, is the same Christ who enjoys a natural unity and equality with the other two persons of the Trinity, the Father and the Holy Spirit. So, 
synthesizing all the things together, we conclude our prayer using through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, because Jesus Christ is a high priest. And then we additionally add who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. In this way, we not limit Christ to humanity, the human level, but instead we also acknowledge his divinity as part of the triune Godhead. And it's uh, kind of beautiful, you know, like uh, we all the time, you know, say the same phrase in our prayers, but have we ever thought about what could this mean? What could that exactly mean? Well, I think like uh, if we pray everything mindfully, then that would be like so profound, so intense. So, yeah, I was just wondering, like uh, we do pray the rosary. So we start with the creed. And by the time we reach the fifth mystery, like half of the time we aren't aware that we were praying the rosary. And uh, I think it is because we are so used to it that we don't pay attention. Uh, we don't do it consciously. But I do feel like uh, if we start praying it, not the rosy alone, like any prayer for that matter, even a short ejaculation like, Lord, have mercy, Christ, save me. Lord, Lord, be with me during this day. Every single thing that we do, if it's just done mindfully, and I think that's just going to be so profound. Like, I literally, I mean, I'm not sure of the time of the duration of this episode. I guess it's like eight minutes now into this. But see, the one phrase, uh, I just, you know, went on speaking about it over and over, over again for eight minutes. So, I mean, like, just imagine like every single thing that the church does, how beautiful it is, like how profound and how meaningful it is. There is nothing like extra biblical. Everything that the church does is uh, biblical. It is traditional. There is nothing uh, invented. There is nothing introduced to, you know, to malign people. Nothing of that sort. But yeah, that's, that's just the episode. And hope you guys learned something from this. I just wish that we all be more mindful of our prayers from now on. And if you like this episode, please do drop a like, comment if you want to express something. Like, we'll reach out. And please do subscribe. And... You can also listen to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, the audio version. And if you're listening to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please do uh, take some time to check the description and go to the YouTube channel and please hit the subscribe there as well. So, well, fine, that's it. And so the main episode is over and this is just some bonus. <laughs> so like this is the first video. So. Let me explain a bit like why faith as it is, is transitioning to the video episodes. Like, I mean, like, see, constantly staring at the slide is boring. So that's what we were doing uh, for all these episodes. Like we publish it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and on YouTube. We post some three or four slides and constantly staring at it for 30 to 40 minutes is definitely difficult. So despite, uh, you know, the odds, we're just trying to make a video episode. Well, actually, um, yeah. And so uh, this is my room. And uh, to those who don't know, like uh, I'm Philip. Philip's John Paul. You can call me Philip. Uh, so 
I am currently doing my second year of philosophy uh, at Vianney Seminary in Elur. I study for the Diocese of Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh. So, yeah, and this is uh, the room that we are given right now. And as you can see, uh, this room is like kind of compact. Like, you know, I mean, like that's what it would be like. Uh, so this is just the wall behind me like i mean yeah it's obvious so i haven't uh you know retouched it for the youtube actually wanted to blur the background and try it but that seemed very weird like for a short video that was fine but for a long video that's not fine so i just left it and yeah, that switchboard there, oh, this way, this thing there, and that hanger there, all these uh, are kind of out of place. And yeah, this uh, room's length is like uh, 12 by 8, 12 by 8. And I could literally touch the wall behind me. Like, yeah, I could touch it. And this is my bed. <laughs> and actually, uh, my laptop table would be here, but for recording purpose, I just shifted it this way uh, because, and yeah, well, I think that's it. Maybe hopefully that for the upcoming episodes, like I'll see if I can do something with the background, but I don't think that really, you know, matters a lot because you're not focused on the background but anyway yeah let me see i mean it doesn't mean that we need to be uh unclean i mean i don't say that this is unclean but yeah so let us let let me see what can be done and if you're still watching thank you thank you for watching so bye bye god bless